continue fighting crime. As you all know, all across America, violent crime has increased, and Harris County is no exception. We have a pandemic, we have the economic impacts of the pandemic, and of course, continued gun violence, and that's taken a toll, a, a third uh, of an increase in terms of uh, homicides. Similarly, a 31% increase in aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. We need to do better than that, and that is why we're adding another tool in the fight against crime in our community. Even though crime is up, the good news is that the violent crime and the violent crime increase is concentrated in particular communities within our county. It's not necessarily all over the place, and so that helps us tackle it. Today at Commissioner's Court, we will consider a new proposal that was developed by the Sheriff's Office uh, with support of the county administrator. It is a precision policing initiative, and what it does is it targets resources, specifically law enforcement officers in the areas, the microzones, with the highest incidence of violent crime. So we are strategically pinpointing and then attacking crime, and the best part of it is we are doing it hand in hand with the community. For too long, we've been using blunt tools to tackle crime when instead we could be smarter and more strategic. And so these are the three parts of the Harris County SAFE program. That's the, the name of the program. First, the initiative uses data mapping and analytics to identify microzones with the highest incidence of violent crime. So these are areas that uh, the data shows are specific hotspots within the five policing units, the policing districts that the Harris County Sheriff's Office um, looks after. This is done through the Sheriff's Crime Analysis and Intelligence Division to identify these hotspots and they've already been pinpointed. The second piece of this is to increase police visibility in those areas to prioritize street level deterrence and to prioritize the arrest specifically of repeat offenders in those communities. There will be both constables and sheriff's deputies conducting this policing as there will be an additional 96 officers per day that are going to be able to go into these hotspots and tackle, um, tackle the violent crime. The third piece, very important, is engaging the community. The Sheriff's Office will partner with those specific neighborhoods before, during, and after the initiative. It's important that we communicate what we're doing, why we're doing it, and the results. And the, the key piece in the engagement is also data collection. They will be conducting data on disparities, body cam data, making sure that, that there aren't uh, disproportionate impacts on, on certain communities, making sure that everything is done fairly. It's so the theory of the case, and this is evidence-based, has been shown to work, is by increasing policing in those areas, by working to take repeat violent offenders off the streets in the targeted microzones, that we will be able to make a dent in our region's crime rate. And this should be able to get off the ground here in a few weeks. Before I hand it off to Commissioner Garcia, I do want to note this is just the latest in a slew of initiatives that we've launched to address violent crime in Harris County. Over the past several years, we have increased the budgets for every law enforcement agency in Harris County, including every constable's office and the DA's office. We've invested millions of dollars in overtime to support our, our sheriff's office uh, Office of Violent Crime and focus on the most violent crimes as we're doing today. We launched a six million dollar gun violence interruption program earlier this year to stop violence before it happens. To help our judicial branch of government, we've invested millions of dollars on tackling the court backlog. Just a few months ago, we invested 50 million dollars in an initiative to fight blight in certain communities so that there's better better lighting safer streets 
and we've been able to work at tackling the root causes of crime, um, mental health issues, substance use disorders, $5 million for a holistic assistance response team that will help free up law enforcement for this kind of work so that the medical uh, uh, experts and social workers can tackle the other kind of work. So we've been using for too long ineffective tools based on outdated ideology to tackle crime and today is an example of focusing on what does work um, on focusing on what will have a positive impact as opposed to simply building more prisons, longer mandatory sentencing, the kinds of things that we tried in the 80s and 90s that ultimately failed to make a meaningful dent in, in tackling recidivism and did end up weakening the trust between law enforcement and communities. So I'm very proud. I urge the court to pass this initiative today. I'm very, very proud to stand with these leaders. Very briefly in Spanish, eh, le agradezco como siempre a mi colega, el comisionado Adrián García, quien tantos años como policía y, y claro como líder de gobierno ha, ha batallado contra el crimen y también eh, al, al Chief Lee, eh, su colega, Major Carter, han trabajado muchísimo con el Aguacil González para llevar a cabo esta iniciativa. La tasa de crimen violento ha incrementado a través de todo nuestro país y en el condado Harris no somos excepción. El número de homicidios ha incrementado un 33% eh, en cuanto a la, el asalto agravado con arma mortal, un incremento de 31%. Entonces, esto obviamente es preocupante, es negativo, es debido a la pandemia, a los impactos económicos de la pandemia y también la violencia armada, la disponibilidad tan amplia de armas de fuego en la comunidad. Lo positivo es que este incremento en la violencia eh, y en la violencia armada está concentrado en ciertas áreas del condado. No sucede realmente por todos lados. Entonces, eso nos permite atacarlo de una manera más estratégica. Hoy vamos a considerar una propuesta que, que eh, se enfoca en policía de precisión, en identificar cuáles son las áreas más impactadas por el crimen violento y concentrar los policías en esas áreas. El programa que se ha diseñado tiene tres partes. El primero utiliza datos, análisis y mapeo para identificar microzonas con más incidencia de crimen, de delitos violentos. Ya se han identificado estas siete zonas, siete microzonas dentro de los cinco distritos policiales de la oficina del Alguacil. La segunda parte del programa es incrementar la visibilidad de los policías en esas siete microzonas. En cuanto a eh, policía en la calle, que uno vea esa presencia, ese es, es en un impedimento contra el crimen. También el arresto de reincidentes. Así aseguramos que las personas que más crimen com cometen no sigan libres en las calles. Finalmente, asociarse con los vecindarios impactados, trabajar con la comunidad. Esta unidad de policías va a trabajar con la comunidad antes, durante y después del programa para identificar, explicar eh, y conversar acerca de qué es esta iniciativa, de qué se trata, responder preguntas, tomar ideas y eh, algo que para mí es muy importante, vamos a colectar todos los datos, la información racial, étnica, en, en la, las, en los videos de las cámaras que utilizan los policías para asegurarse que todo sea de una manera equi equitativa, no discriminatoria y eso se va a estudiar. Quiero dejar muy claro, esta es simplemente la última, el último, lo último de una serie de iniciativas que hemos adoptado para abordar el tema de crimen violento en el condado Harris. Durante los últimos tres años hemos incrementado el presupuesto de todas las agencias eh, de aplicación de la ley en el condado Harris, incluyendo la oficina de alguacil, de los constables y la fiscal. Hemos invertido eh, 6 millones de dólares en un programa de interrupción de violencia con armas de fuego, también para apoyar a nuestra rama judicial, millones de dólares para atacar la acumulación de casos en los tribunales penales. Hace poco invertimos 50 millones de dólares para atacar los la, edificios arruinados, las calles oscuras. Todas estas 
eh, estos eh, impactos ambientales que son incubadores de crimen y de violencia armada. Y además invertimos también 5 millones de dólares en atacar las causas fundamentales de la delincuencia, trabajar con doctores, con trabajadores sociales en el tema de salud mental para que los policías puedan enfocarse en el, los delitos violentos y los expertos en temas más médicos, más sociales puedan trabajar en eso. Fundamentalmente se trata de una estrategia fuerte, pero también inteligente. Por muchos años se ha basado la estrategia policial en ideología anticuada, construir más prisiones, eh, intentar eh, incrementar las sentencias obligatorias y eso no ha dado buenos resultados, al contrario, ha debilitado la eh, credibilidad entre eh, la comunidad y la comunidad policial. Entonces, estamos trabajando en que esta, esta iniciativa funcione, va a incrementar el número de policías en estas microzonas a 94 oficiales más al día. Son policías que vienen tanto de la oficina del alguacil como de la oficina de los constables y nos vamos a enfocar en estas siete zonas, ya eh, Chiflin tendrá más información. Entonces, me enorgullece muchísimo haber trabajado en esto con mi colega, el comisionado García, y sé que ambos esperamos que nuestros colegas en la Corte apoyen esta iniciativa. Commissioner García. Thank you, Judge. Belated uh, Thanksgiving to everyone. And uh, let me first commend uh, Sheriff uh, González, uh, Chief Lee, and Major Cotter uh, for their respective leadership in bringing in a very precise and very stri uh, strategic and surgical strike to neighborhoods that have, have been overwhelmed. The data that uh, Major Lee and his team has put together identifies that this is uh, a problem that is challenging very, very specific areas. And so with a very strategic and very surgical strike to those areas, with a combination of resources, approaches, and strategies, uh, I am very, very confident, based on my experience of years past, that this will bear immense fruit, as our previous initiatives have already bared fruit. Already, the Harris County Sheriff's Office, in coordination with the constables, have taken over 200 wanted violent offenders off the streets of Harris County. This will do more. But this is a holistic, uh, strategic, and surgical strike. Too often in years past, uh, we have brought down the thunder of God on communities and then just left debris behind. The holistic and collective community approach that the sheriff has uh, put together will make sure that communities know that we're there to work for them, support them, and to make sure that their communities can be walkable and safe yet again. And so I'm very proud of this, and I'll, and I'll just close with this point. Um, Judge Hidalgo has been uh, very clear. This is just yet another approach to making sure that we're doing all to heal Harris County. Years past, throughout my life experiences, we have had various economic downturns. And in, in every one of those economic downturns, crime has been one of the major outputs of those downturns. Uh, violent crime, we've seen officers lose their lives, um, but yet there was only a one-dimensional approach when we went to address those issues. It was strictly law enforcement. But I'm proud of the fact that we're taking care of small businesses. We're taking care of people's health. We're making sure that food is on the table. All respective elements that ensure that the whole community is being lifted up. And while the brave men and women in law enforcement are ensuring that those who want to be predators and who want to uh, try to victimize those who are already struggling, they just don't know it, but they got a pair of handcuffs already on them, thanks uh, to this strategy that we will see unfolding. So I'm very proud uh, to be here, and, uh, and I want to thank Judge Hidalgo for her leadership as well, and uh, I believe that this will be one of those 5-0 votes that we will uh, see at Commissioner's Court. Thank you very much. 
Gracias a todos. Este, me da eh, mucho orgullo y placer de estar aquí con ustedes. Este, reconociendo el trabajo del alguacil este, González, el uh, Chief Lee, el uh, Major uh, Carter y todo el equipo del Departamento de Alguacil del Condado de Harris. Este, estamos reconociendo que este es un esfuerzo que va a ser muy estratégico, muy este, específico para atacar la delincuencia en ciertas áreas que están este, afectadas y han sido afectadas por la delincuencia y por los delincuentes. La idea aquí es de ser bien preciso en quién buscar, dónde atacar y dónde poner los recursos. Pero también la estratégica es holística. Estar seguro que la comunidad llega a saber que nuestros elementos de la seguridad pública están aquí para apoyarlos, trabajar por ellos, servirlos y trabajar y asegurar que sus comunidades pueden ser seguras y sanas nuevamente, donde ellos pueden salir sin preocupo de uh, su, este, su seguridad. Y también de reconocer que esto es solo un esfuerzo más del de condado de la Huesa Hidalgo, uh, su servidor, mis colegas, en llegar a, a, a cabo este, esfuerzos para apoyar toda la, la comunidad del condado Harris. En mi tiempo, yo he visto varios este, uh, aspectos a la economía. Y desgraciadamente, cada vez que estamos viendo que la economía ha sido afectada, vemos que uno de los resultados de esa este, reducción en, uh, en el esfuerzo de nuestra economía es la delincuencia. Pero en tiempos antes hemos mandado los oficiales a trabajar, pero no este, uh, pensando en cómo dejar la comunidad ya después que los oficiales lleguen a entrar. Entonces, este, esta, tra este, esta estra estratégica está completa, está holística porque no solo vamos a ir a buscar los malhechores, pero vamos a estar seguro que la comunidad llega a saber que estamos allí para trabajar con ellos y apoyarlos. Eso es lo, lo bello de este plan. Entonces, nuevamente, le doy todas las gracias al Departamento de Aguacil, a los constables que van a ser parte de este esfuerzo, pero también de reconocer que este, esto es solo un esfuerzo más en, uh, en combatir la delincuencia que hemos visto. No nos hemos olvidado de la seguridad de nuestros residentes. Estamos sumamente preocupados y estamos haciendo todo posible para afectar este, esta delincuencia en un aspecto positivo, pero también con una, un grande impacto de largo plazo. Gracias. Thank you, George. Chief. Good morning. And thank you for uh, joining us today as we launch our Harris County Safe Violent Crime Initiative. I am uh, Assistant Chief Mike Lee with the Harris County Sheriff's Office, and this morning here with me is Major Susan Cotter. Major Cotter is over all patrol operations for the Harris County Sheriff's Office. I'm grateful to the county judge, Commissioner Garcia, and the entire commissioner's court for continuing to invest in proven approaches and viable public safety strategies to prevent and respond to violent crime. With their leadership and support, we have implemented and are implementing multi-pronged solutions to better serve the residents of Harris County and to keep gaining insight into the unique needs of each community. We're here today because we continue to move toward a comprehensive strategy for reducing violent crime and approach grounded in research, data, transparency, and constant review. Effectively using data-driven models like the Harris County Safe Initiative encourages transparency and accountability intended to build legitimacy and trust between police and the community. Senseless violence has shaken our communities and taken the lives of too many people. In unincorporated Harris County alone since 2019, murders have increased nearly 33%, and violent crime offenses have increased nearly 18% overall. It's our job as peace officers to help protect our communities. Our residents deserve to feel safe. 
our Harris County Safe Violent Crime Initiative will assign deputies to seven of our most violence prone areas in the county referred to as micro zones in the exact areas and the exact times that police services are needed the most. This initiative will provide on average an additional 96 deputies on a daily basis to the streets of unincorporated Harris County proactively addressing violent crime. This initiative is a proactive policing strategy focused on building community relationships and drawing on the deterrent value of high visibility targeted enforcement. It's about prioritizing street level crime prevention and removing violent offenders and their firearms from our communities and areas where violent crime is concentrated the most. This initiative will tell us when and where to focus our strategies for long-term change in disproportionately affected areas. We know that violent crime is not a problem that can be solved by law enforcement alone. At the heart of this data-driven model is community policing. And at the heart of the community policing model is community engagement. Our Community Problem-Oriented Policing Unit, also known as CPOP, will engage residents and stakeholders throughout the initiative to engage directly with them as partners to prioritize social harms and to solicit input on additional solutions to prevent violent crime in their communities. Regularly generated progress reports by our crime analysts will keep deputies and residents informed and lay the foundation for assessing effectiveness in the use of specific operational techniques in personnel deployment. This constant monitoring and evaluation will provide valuable feedback for adjustments in realigning resource allocation. It will serve as a complement and force multiplier to our existing crime reduction efforts seen in our various dedicated units and task forces. Analysis-driven strategic policing is critical, especially as agencies seek to improve public safety with increasingly limited resources. With the support of Harris County Commissioner's Court and our community, we will work to address our most violent prone areas to make Harris County safe. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take any questions. Yeah, Judge, Dr. Thompson, H&D Magazine. Uh, community policing, relational policing, these things you are saying are the same things that we've discussed with former HPD Chief um, Acevedo and others. The uh, HPD has been involved in most of these things. So when we talk about policing of the 21st century, it's not different from what you're saying. So what you're saying is not new. Uh, my concern is why at this point in time and of what use could this be politically? to those who are not here and know what all of this is going, because I know that some of your colleagues in the uh, Commissioner's Court were with us at Crime Stoppers a few weeks ago, and we're discussing some of these issues. They have different opinions and ideas about some of these violent crimes, repeat offenders, uh, accusing judges, and so on. So what are your comments to the, uh, the issues at raised? Yeah, I mean, the key thing is crime is up. Um, that's a concern. We need to tackle it. <coughs> we need to make sure that there's a system that can distinguish between repeat violent offenders and low-level folks that don't need to be incarcerated. We need to make sure that all the stakeholders recognize that there is no silver bullet. We can't pretend like any one thing is the cause of the crime or any one silver bullet is going to magically solve it. And so what we're doing is looking at a slew of evidence-based initiatives. 
fighting blight, tackling the backlog, working on mental health, working on homelessness, um, working on violence and eruptions. I mean, even sending teams to the hospital when there's a, 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 a someone who is there from a gunshot wound to try to stop that cycle of gun violence. And then now this investment on the precision policing. As the chief said, they're looking at what time of day. I mean, we have the data between what time and what time in which neighborhood we need a specific attention because that is when crime occurs. So, you know, I'm not going to pretend like this initiative by itself is going to solve all our problems. And that's what I ask that nobody do that. We can't, we have to be very honest, very straightforward with the community. It's going to take all of us. It's going to take a slew of smart initiatives. But what we can't do is go back to the 80s and 90s and simply say, you know, build more prisons, lock them all up, you know, because no jail is going to be big enough for that. And we tried that. Um, and all it did was, was increase disparities and, and make us to where we incarcerate more people than any other nation. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, that's what we're doing here is being tough, but also being smart. Yeah. Sorry, you mentioned a very specific, very targeted area, seven specific locations within the community. I know that our viewers and our community members are going to want to know, is that my community? Can you tell us specifically where these areas are um, that you'll be concentrating? Yes, I'll leave that up to Chief Lee. I want to make a point, and he did make it, and perhaps I wasn't clear enough with it. This initiative is focused on unincorporated Harris County. So some viewers might say, I know my community has high violence. Why not mine? And the answer might be because it's in the city of Houston. But what we're trying to do is divide and conquer. City of Houston has a Houston Police Department that only focuses there. So that that's why we're, we're leveraging our constables and sheriff's office for the areas outside the city and other cities that have their dedicated police units. So, <coughs> chiefly, you have the, the neighborhoods. So the seven micro zones, uh, each uh, of our five patrol districts have uh, those zones. And it's important to note that each of the commissioner's precincts also include at least one zone. And the zones are in patrol district one, that is what's known as the Cypress Station, uh, 1960 Kirkendall area and our patrol district 2 that is in Commissioner Garcia's area that is the Aldine area and our patrol district 3 which is the east side of Harris County that is also in Commissioner Garcia's area that is the Wood Forest Ubaldi uh, Road intersection area also known as kind of the North Shore area also Freeport in Normandy at I-10, the Channel View area. Out in our patrol district four, that is the areas of like Little York, uh, Queenston, Eldridge, also Morton, Franz Road, uh, Psalms, Park Row area. And also in our patrol district five, which is in the northwest part of Harris County, I believe in Commissioner Cagle's area, that is the 290, 1960, uh, 1960 Jones Road, 1960 Mills Road, West Little York, Gessner Road, Highway 6 and West Road, Highway 6, Point, uh, Point Northwest Boulevard areas. Those are the seven micro zones. We have time for just a, one or two more questions from the court. Starting right now. How's the Harris County court system working with you to keep these uh, offenders from low bonding back out on the street to commit more crimes like we're seeing so much? Yeah, I mean, part of the challenge, and this has surfaced recently um, with, with an investigative report that the Houston Chronicle did, is a lot of, certainly most of the offenders that are out and recidivate do so because they pay their bond. And what we've learned is many times the bond, uh, the bail bond companies actually set a lower percentage, so typically it's 10% that of the bail that the defendants are supposed to pay um, at this point up front at this point they're being asked to pay one or two percent in some cases and uh, over one to two years and so it's important to do that the last court we passed a request to ask the bail bond companies let us see that data uh, oh, you know what what percentage are you, you charging folks because we don't want people you know to pay one two percent then they get out and recidivate um, Fundamentally, fundamentally, it's about the system. The United States is one of only two nations, Philippines being the other one, around the world that uses private 
bond companies as the way to ensure that people come back. So obviously, you know, if it were a good system, the other countries would use it. So we, we can't control the existence of this private bond system that puts profits, bail bond profits, over public safety. But what we can do is shine a light on that um, and then work to tackle the other issues around it. The bigger challenge, of course, is the increased crime rate, the issue of COVID, the economy. I mean, there's so many different pieces, gun violence. But I think if we tackle all of those, shine a light on the, on the bond issues, give the judges the tools they need to make informed decisions, the space they need to have enough jurors to move their trials along. I mean, we are going at it from every angle. I, I do want to make a note on the Omicron variant. I know we received a lot of uh, questions about that, and then I'll answer another question. Um, but on that note, we are watching very closely. We don't have any cases right now that are reported in Harris County, but it's probably a matter of time. It's surely a matter of time before we have one. What we know right now is there are hypotheses out there about the fact that the variant may be more transmissible, that the variant may be more dangerous, but the studies have yet to be completed. So in the meantime, my message to the community is be alert, uh, no need to panic, uh, certainly we, we, the, the thing that you can do, that you can be sure will make a difference, is get your vaccine and get your booster. That is the surefire way against this variant or others to certainly make a difference. And then we'll see as the data comes back just how effective, hopefully it'll be, the vaccine will be just as effective as it is against the other variants, but certainly it will have a big impact. En cuanto a la variante Omicron, hemos recibido bastantes preguntas. Sé que es una preocupación. No hay ningún caso en este momento en nuestro condado, pero eh, a medida que pase el tiempo, seguramente va a aparecer, van a aparecer los casos. En este momento hay hipótesis que de repente la variante sea más contagiosa, más peligrosa. No sabemos, falta que se hagan los estudios. Entonces, por mientras, lo que se puede hacer, lo más impactante para protegernos contra eso es la vacuna y la vacuna de refuerzo. Entonces, hagan eso, ayúdennos como comunidad y así vamos a sufrir un mucho menor impacto de esta variante. Ya veremos qué tan difícil sea, esperemos que sea eh, igual, eh, de, de repente menos peligrosa, pero ya veremos, es, es ciertamente posible que sea más peligrosa, más contagiosa, pero por ahora no, no, no eh, lleguemos a conclusiones sin los datos necesarios. Yeah, you know, one of the our threat level system says at level yellow. Uh, people should feel people who are vaccinated uh, should feel comfortable not wearing a mask. Um, we want to stick with our threat level system. At the same time, if the variant proves to be more contagious, we're going to have to say, you know what, everyone vaccinated or not vaccinated, you know, as much as we don't like it, we're going to still uh, have a recommendation to wear it. So that's the kind of thing I'm waiting for the data on. Uh, the epidemiologists, the public health department are comfortable with our threat level system right now, and then we'll see what the variant tells us. Our numbers look good. We're at yellow because our metrics are looking a lot better than before. Hospitalizations are down, cases are down, um, positivity is down. Now they, they continue to slow down, that decrease is sort of flattening and the question is, will that lead to another increase? And ultimately, whether it will or, or it will not is completely in our hands. It is about vaccination. So if you are one of those folks that has not gotten your vaccine yet, spare us a fifth wave of COVID. That might be more dangerous. We've lost enough people. Help us by getting your vaccine. And if you have your two shots and it's been six months, get your booster. I got mine uh, just last week. And, you know, I felt a little bit tired for, for about 24 hours. And, and now I feel great. And I know that I'm as protected as I can be from this virus. So I hope everyone will join me in doing the same. You, you know you can always get the shot at your uh, clinic, your doctor's office, the pharmacy, or readyharris.org. It is always free, no insurance required. Okay, thank you all very much. I know Chief Lee will be around if you only have any questions for him.